Hey everyone, there's been an avalanche of activity recently with talk of Hillary Clinton and her connection to the UFO subject. Caught up in the email scandal and the WikiLeaks release of messages from her server, we've also seen the release of multiple emails from Hillary's campaign manager, John Podesta. I don't have time to get into the background of Podesta in this video, but it goes without saying that he's a big proponent for UFO disclosure, and what he believes is an effort of the government to withhold knowledge on the subject. The elections are coming up next week, and whether Hillary wins or not, history has never seen so much political attention drawn to the UFO and alien subjects in the United States. I recently interviewed Grant Cameron, who is arguably the foremost expert on U.S. presidents and their interests in the extraterrestrial topics. He's been sifting through thousands of recently released emails sent to or from John Podesta, and he's made some very significant discoveries. Without spending too much more time to edit this video, I want to share with you that interview. I'll be coming out with a separate video of Hillary's public interviews on the subject soon. Enjoy. Is it all coming from the Podesta uh, dump, or is it? Okay. Yeah. So from the Podesta dump, just kind of give everyone kind of a recap, um, if you would, just of what you think is the most interesting uh, implications from this. Okay. Um, the Podesta emails, to me, are extremely important because they seem to follow a timeline that we already knew. For example, John Podesta tweets in uh, February of 2015, just as he's leaving the Obama administration, saying that his biggest disappointment was not getting the UFO files. And what you see in the WikiLeaks emails is people starting to contact him regarding what he's saying. And so you get some, some correspondence, and one of them was fairly significant, where um, a, a top lobbyist contacts him out of Washington. Um, uh, and says to him, uh, oh, I see you on TV, and John Podesta makes this comment, more to come, almost indicating that there's, some, there's something actually going on. And then you have the other um, non-email tweet that John Podesta makes where he talks to Lena Dunham. And this is September 30th, 2015, where he says she does a video interview with Hillary, and after the interview, John tweets, Good interview, Lena. Next time, ask her about the aliens. And this is where it really gets significant. That you again, you get some emails, but you get a very significant email that occurs about um, that was September 30th, and then she goes on the Kimmel show on November the 5th. And the uh, there's a woman. Her name escapes me. Um, there's an e she writes the email to John, updating what happened on the Kimmel show. And she says she was let, she was able to get a lot of message across, and she was very disappointed that she didn't get asked a UFO question. So this was after the Lena Dunham. Yeah. So what what you can see here is that Hillary is expecting Kimmel to ask her about the aliens because John has set this up. He wants someone to ask about the aliens, and she doesn't get asked, and she's very upset. So uh, and she had practiced for five minutes, according to this email, this UAP thing. And she doesn't get asked it on the Kimmel show until March of the next year. And then he asks her the question. And uh, so you can see the, the March 2016 in a completely different uh, light. When you watch the video, now you know that she has rehearsed this, that she has actually practiced this whole thing. And, and you know, there's a new name. It's Unexplained Aerial Phenomenon. Unexplained aerial phenomenon, yep, really? Yep, UAP. That's the latest nomenclature. I so, like the old one. I like UFO. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it, I think we can use them interchangeably. So when she gets asked the $64,000 question, the president doesn't know. I asked your husband. He was on here. He said he didn't know. You can see that she's immediately, she's smiling. She's very confident that she has practiced the answer. When we had your husband, President Clinton, on this show, he said, I asked him about UFOs in Area 51, and, and if, he, if he looked in, because if I was president, that's the first thing i do. i go right into those files and right. see what was going on. Right. And he said that he did do that. Yes. And that he didn't find anything. Well, I'm oh. gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> right? It's, that this is, uh, to me, almost indicates that the, this whole thing is, is a setup by Podesta where um, they're trying to get these questions, this UFO question, for whatever reason, asked. And when she does get the UAP thing, she actually messes it up. It's supposed to be uh, unexplained in, uh, or unknown, 
and she uses the word unexplained. So even though she practiced for five minutes, she messes up this UAP uh, acronym that, that she on the Kimmel show. And so even though John Podesta sets this up, you don't get until uh, Damon Steer asks her on at the end of December the question. Now, there's been one email that just briefly references the fact that um, she was asked a question. And we still have not seen the email. I'm sort of anticipating there's going to be an email where um, there's some sort of comment on Damon Steer filing ask, ask, asking her the question. I know Damon is very sort of nervous as to what they're going to say. He, he knows this may be coming as well. So you can see these sort of things. And what you have is two basic uh, key sets of emails. One is the DeLong emails. And the other one is the Edgar Mitchell emails. And the Edgar Mitchell emails are getting more traction on the sites. There's more people looking at this or interested in this, but really nothing happened. What happens there? There's all these emails that appear in, in John, uh, John Podesta's files written by um, Rebecca Hardcastle Wright. She writes a couple of them. She sends John her book on exoconsciousness. And, uh, but most of the emails are written by Terry Mansfield from this Terry Billionaire website or email address. So she's at trying to set up a meeting and the emails are written as if they're coming from Edgar Mitchell, but they're not coming from Edgar Mitchell. Uh, Terry Mansfield and a woman by the name of Suzanne were given the job of trying to get a, in a interview with um, Barack Obama. And you can see this in the interview that um, they set it up actually for, I think, uh, August the 11th, 2014 in the emails. And then Edgar Mitchell can't make it. So Terry requests, let's have a Skype conference between you, John Podesta, me, and uh, Edgar Mitchell. And the secretary or the assistant to John Podesta writes back and says, John will have a one-on-one -on -one and if it works out, he'll take it to the president. So the key to the whole Edgar Mitchell thing is this meeting never does take place. They never do get a meeting with John Podesta, even though these these times are set up. And so even though it's getting the most traction, really nothing happens. There's a lot of emails written, but they're being written on John, on, on Edgar Mitchell's behalf by uh, uh, mostly by Terry Mansfield. And she's sending these, these things. And there's about, I think, 17 emails uh, Edgar Mitchell emails that go back and forth and back and forth. The DeLong emails are more important. The DeLong emails are uh, Tom DeLong, the musician from Blink-182, uh, sets up this group of um, high-level, mostly military people in the United States. And if you listen to his interview with Jimmy Church, you'll hear how he encounters John Podesta. And he claims that John Podesta is one of his 10 sources. And he's making the same sort of claim that Bill Moore made, that Stephen Greer makes, is that they have government people inside who are telling him them the truth. And he's the disclosure guy. He's going to get this out. And what he says is he went to John Podesta. He went to the military people first and they agreed to do this and then he goes to john podesta and he makes his pitch to john podesta i'm this rock star guy i've got this big media outlet and i can get this message to the young people you're messing this up you can't get this message across and i can do it for you and the military people play along with him and they say okay we'll, we'll give you this stuff he goes to john podesta he phones john podesta he makes his pitch to john podesta john podesta doesn't say anything so Tom DeLong says at the end of the conversation he's listening to john podesta and john just says well I'm kind of busy, pull me back in a couple of months. And Tom figures it's a total waste of time. He's just ignoring me. He thinks I'm a crazy rock star. And so Tom doesn't phone him back. And these are the emails we're waiting for. These are the most explosive emails that will come if they do come. According to Tom DeLong, in two months later, John Podesta, suddenly he said there was a flurry of emails from John Podesta in his email box. And John said, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to do this. Um, this is of extreme importance, and I need you to come to Washington. So those are the emails we're waiting for. We have not seen those yet. But what we do have is a lot of emails from, from Tom DeLong, sort of informing uh, Steven Spielberg about his, his, his program, uh, these uh, high-level military people he's got. He names a number of people, DreamWorks people. Uh, he even offers to bring Steven Spielberg. Uh, possibly bring Steven Spielberg to John Podesta's office 
in January of 2016. And he names a bunch of high profile uh, Hollywood people in one email of people who are working with him. And he talks about Rolling Stone magazine working with him. And he's trying to get John Podesta to set up a high level reporter in The New York Times and The Washington Post. So John is, is playing this game. And then the key email, I guess, of all the emails is the email that takes place on January 25th, 2016. And this is where Tom DeLong comes to, um, ma makes an email to John Podesta. And he says, I've got a couple of my, my inside people that I want to talk to you. And these include um, uh, Robert Weiss, who's the head of Lockheed Skunk Works, uh, Major Neil uh, McCasland from Wright Patterson Air Force Base, running the lab where rumored they, they took the the, um, the UFO material from Roswell, and the third guy I think um, his name is escaping me, but he was the assistant head of um, uh, the U.S. Air Force um, uh, Space Command out of Colorado. So he he wants to introduce John to these people. And the key email is um, an email from G January 25th. Um, uh, Amelia, Amelia Fisher, John Podesta's assistant, sends out the email. And it has all these generals' names on it. It has John Podesta's name on it. And what it is is a meeting, a Google Hangout meeting, a video meeting that's going to take place uh, from 1230 to 130. And we know that these people all attended because uh, we have the confirmations as they as they came in uh, that these people would attend. And after the meeting later in that day, uh, Tom DeLong sends an email to John Podesta and says to John Podesta, um, McCaslin was pretending he was just, he was saying he was a skeptic. He's not a skeptic. He's actually the guy that's hand, helping me set this thing up. So I guess in this meeting, McCaslin played like he was a skeptic. And uh, then you have the a month later, you have another very dramatic email. And I say this is very ironic because when John Podesta was chief of staff for the for the Clinton administration, he talked about very clearly the fact that he was interested in X-Files and that he tried to uh, actually at one point phone Area 51 to find out what was going on. He was very interested. And so a month after, in February of 2016, DeLong sends an email back to Podesta. And that's when he says, I've got an email from Robert Weiss. And he would like to know if there's any updates. And if you've got any little bit that you can give us, uh, I'd be pleased. I know you're busy. I'd be pleased to have it. So what this indicates to me is before John Podesta was phoning Area 51, now the Area 51 guy is phoning John Podesta. And it, it sounds like John Podesta had agreed to do something in that meeting, to follow up on something in that meeting. And they're coming back. Weiss is asking a month later, is there any updates? So that was a very significant email, and we haven't seen John Podesta's reply yet, whether he replies back and gives them an update. And the last email, I guess, is very significant, is um, this happens before. Um, John, John Podesta is interviewed by Tom DeLong in um, July of 2015. Uh, there's actually, in the emails, there's actually the questions. There's uh, questions, and I actually did a posting showing that John sends these questions from, that he's going to be asked in the interview to three different people. And some of these people are in the uh, institute that um, John Podesta ran, the, the Institute for, for American Progress, which provides supposedly 40% of all the high-level administration people in the Barack Obama administration. And he sends it to two of those people, and he sends it to one person in the Cl Hillary Clinton campaign. And almost like comments or for, for these questions. And we haven't seen any replies back, but he does send these questions to these other people. So that happens in, in um, July of 2015. And then shortly after that, there's an email where, um, a significant email where DeLong sends an email and he says the, the general, and I'm assuming that he's talking about McCasland, the guy from Wright Patterson Air Force Base. He's got a couple of comments on what the disclosure thing should take place. And then he quotes the general. And McCaslin is basically saying in this email, uh, the, the memo that comes from the White House has to do the following things. And he mentions the fact that um, you have to um, assign NASA to head this thing because that's their job. And if, if the president doesn't assign this, this disclosure opening thing, that whatever they're doing, not, nobody's going to do anything. So there's a number of significant points where this general is basically talking about what he, what the, President Obama has to do 
to make sure this thing works when when they open it up. And as DeLong's uh, claim is that there um, there is an initiative taking place. And once the email started leaking, you would assume that this would all shut down. And what DeLong is saying in the last couple of days is it's bigger. Now, I have some contacts that I know who are also being contacted. And um, a couple there's a couple of crossovers. So I sort of know from a third bunch of people that this is going on. And they're saying exactly the same thing. They're saying it's bigger than before. These emails have not stopped this uh, initiative. And what I'm told is January. Look to January. It may not be disclosure, but it's going to be big. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. But uh, there's, I would estimate there's probably... From all the rumors I've heard, there's over 20 people that are involved in this thing. And one of the ones we know for sure is Jacques Vallée, because Jacques Vallée is writing the the forward to Tom, to Tom DeLonge's uh, next book. And he, has, and he has a similar theory. Tom DeLonge has this bizarre theory about the aliens are all evil and they're, they're bad news, as he calls them. They're bad news. And he goes to the cargo cult theory, this whole idea that religions are are created by people seeing UFOs. And that sort of goes to the idea that Jacques Vallée had, that that UFOs sort of transform through the generations from, from elves to this to that. And so Jacques Vallée is one of the people. And the other thing that I've heard, although I can't really confirm the names I've heard, but um, I've written a lot in the past about uh, the Avery, the group called the Avery. Uh, that they appeared in the, in the 1970s. They were working with Robert Emenager. Then they were working with Bigelow. Then they were working with John Alexander on the on his group, the, uh, the UFO uh, working group. And then they were with Bill Moore. And a lot of these names I have now seen again, as if these people are on board as well. And what I think Tom DeLong has done is he has set a, a, a group, uh, a media group. He has a scientific group. He has a government group and the head guy is a crossover. And I think I know he is. He's a civilian guy. You've never heard of him before. Uh, who's the guy that he talks about in Washington. I think I know who that guy is. And um, then he has um, uh, the sort of the, well, there's a the media group, the government group, the scientific group. And uh, so he has them in, and there's got to be a lot of people. And this is what I'm hearing from the people I'm talking to is that, there could be 30 people in this group. There's lots of people that are involved and it's a big initiative and it has not stopped uh, by these emails. You think the emails would shut it down and they, and, and both the DeLong and the people I'm talking to are saying the same thing, same thing. No, it's bigger than it was before. Has he made it, has DeLong made any comments about regrets for naming people's names now that are now leaked that he's got no. generals? No, he's only, he's only had one, he's only had one uh, thing he put on his Facebook and that was that WikiLeaks has got, has got some of it all messed up. And I don't know what he can possibly mean by that, because how can they mess it up? It, it, there may be stuff missing, but it's basically the way it is, because I have talked to a lot of the people. I contacted Terry Mansfield, uh, Rebecca Hardcastle Wright. Um, I talked to a lot of the people who sent the emails. I contacted all the people because all the emails are in there. And nobody yet has con has come back to me and said it's not legitimate. They're all saying these are my emails. These, these are legitimate emails. But WikiLeaks is just putting out what, the, what they've got. And I saw Bassett put that on there too. He said, "No, this is exactly what I sent uh, Podesta," and yeah. and it seems like he's echoing what Podesta said earlier, um, kind of like, "Yeah, yeah, I don't have time to go through it all. Some of it's not correct." I mean, yeah, maybe just to throw a red herring in there to say to people, "Don't believe everything," because you know. Yeah, or he doesn't have to talk about it because if he, if he confirms it's for real, then they can ask him about specific emails. What about this one? What about that? And, and I think the, the the Clinton campaign is just holding holding on for the election. It's like don't say anything. You know we're a little bit up. Uh, you know the more you talk, the more trouble you get in. So just keep quiet and hope the election comes faster than than you know hope for. So now, in your opinion, um, from what you've seen and the, the chatter back and forth, what do you think um, would would this quash a lot of this if Hillary is not elected? I mean, where does this go with with DeLong and Podesta and everybody else? Uh, I think it hinges based upon this January thing that I've heard. It seems to indicate that something will happen uh, with Hillary because John has 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 talked about it. And when you see the emails combined with with jo what John's doing to me, it's like when I wrote my book, the, the Clinton UFO storybook, I said, Basically, he's the puppet master, and this is what the emails are confirming: is that this is this is not Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has never brought up the subject. 
Hillary Clinton is only answering questions. And I was told this about a year ago from somebody that said, and Bill, and Stephen Greer said the same thing, that Bill Clinton has sent this message back, I can't do it, but you can. And I was told the same thing by people I've talked to who said that it can't have the government's fingerprints on it. It has to be people asking questions. And, and that seems to be what's happening with Hillary, is that Hillary is not bringing up the subject, but she is answering every question that's given to her, and she's not evading the questions. So it's, it's almost like... Um, uh, you have, and then you have John, uh, another email that, that, um, comes to mind is DeLong sets up, I think he set up the interview with KLS TV because Podesta is, he always says he's, he believes in the cult of non-personality. He really doesn't do interviews. He stays in the background behind the curtain and pulls the strings. So he doesn't, he only interview he's really done. He did one in California and he did the one at KLS TV and it was in the one at KLS TV where he says to the reporter, he says, I think I convinced her. He, hadn't, he couldn't convince Bill to do it. He couldn't convince Obama to do it. But he says, I think I convinced her to do it, to put, look at the material and release as much as she can. Oh, wow. Now, a, now that, after he did that when interview. Was that? I, that? That was just before the Nevada uh, primary, a couple days before the, uh, whenever the Nevada primary was, where he does that KLS TV. And then that's where he leaks out this thing. I think I convinced her. Um, and and Hillary's saying the same thing. I promised John I would do it. So John is the one behind us. So I asked Billy Cox, once he did the interview with in Nevada, it was very close in Florida. And I asked Billy Cox, I said, contact Podesta. Maybe he'll do an interview because Florida's close. And of course, he didn't even answer the email because he'd gotten the message out. So he, he does, he talks when he needs to talk and he, and you listen very carefully and you can see that, that he's putting this kind of stuff out, that, that Hillary is just part of this and it's John Podesta that's actually operating it and Hillary is just going along with what John, John's doing. And so they always have the fallback is that when they ask Hillary, it's not Hillary that's doing it. They can always say, oh, it's just John's idea. And that's how it sort of falls off. And the other important thing that, that comes to mind is when John is doing this, when he's putting this stuff up in the open, it's extremely important to realize how a political campaign works, that John Podesta knows he's running a billion dollar campaign and that everything is done by focus groups, and especially in the Clinton campaign, it's done by focus groups. You put it in front of a focus group. If it goes well, you talk about it. If it doesn't go well in the focus group, you don't talk about it. And because he brought up the UFO issue means that it, it went well in the focus group, that he knew this wouldn't harm things. And that's exactly what happened. Trump hasn't jumped on it. Nobody's jumped on it. They have got no backlash on this thing. And they've fallen back on this thing that it's just John Podesta as obsession that has really got nothing to do with Hillary Clinton, and yet this message is coming out. So uh, Hillary, I think, is like a pawn in the big chess game, and she's willing to play it. But what I've been told by the people I'm talking to, and Tom DeLong says the same thing, is this is not something that they're playing with. They know what they're going to do. There is a plan, and the plan is in action. I've heard from from different people that this is they're not experimenting. There's a plan, and and it's in action, and they're doing something that that. It's I used to I always used to think that they were sort of doing the general disclosure thing. But what I've heard is, no, they, they know exactly what they're doing. So, the yeah, she's she's more of the messenger. They're trying to brand her as, hey, look, I'm just as curious as you are. Let's, yeah. let's let's look into this. But it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, because I think if it's not a disclosure with a capital D and it's not coming from whoever the secret keeper is, if it's not coming from them, it's almost like Podesta and DeLong and his group are just like everybody else, trying to piece it together with people who worked on it and everything else, but it's not an official uh, declaration. So it would be interesting to see how they come out with kind of a half disclosure and saying, look, we believe the government has done this and this and this. We don't have the evidence really to show you, though. I mean, if, they, if they're going around doing this, it's... Um, it's going to be hard to get the tangible evidence, I think, to lay it on the table. Otherwise, we would be having all these back and forth meetings. And what do you think yeah. about that? I mean, do you well, think although in what I've seen is that you have the statements that Hillary's making and Podesta are making indicate that the president is running the show. For example, there's this uh, this, this Terry Mansfield thing where she wants this three way between John Podesta, her and Edgar Mitchell. And that's when Podesta's secretary says, John will do a one-on-one, -on -one, and if it, if, it, if it works out, he'll take it to the, he'll, before he, he'll, he wants a one-on-one -on -one before he takes it to the president, which means he's not going to the evil cabal, the Wizard of Oz, or whatever. 
he's going to the president. And and also Hillary says in one interview, if you listen carefully, everybody always brings up the thing where she says, if it involves national security, I I can't leave, release that. Everybody brings that. They miss the very next words that she says, if I can get agreement, which means that there's some sort of vote that she has the material and whether it's a director of national security, CIA, uh, joint chiefs of staff, whoever's in this group or the MJ 12, or it's on, she said, if I can get agreement, which means that there's some sort of vote that takes place, which may be what's actually going on is that the vote you say used to be 12 to zero and then eight to four and then six all. And now it's six, you know, it's, uh, five, seven and, and more people want it out that they're making this move. So Hillary talks about the fact that, that there's this vote thing, and John, in this interview with KLS TV, says she has to sit down and she has to look at the material and disclose as much as she can, which indicates the fact that she will have the material in front of her, which goes back when you did the review of the of the Clinton thing, where he says, you know, I knew there was going to be a gazillion when he's talking to uh, Kimmel. He says, I knew there was going to be a gazillion questions. So I, I called in all the Roswell files and I read them. And I had and them all I, reviewed. Oh, yeah. And and then he says, I couldn't find anything. I'm embarrassed to say I couldn't find anything. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't say I called in all the Roswell files and read them and then say I couldn't get anything. And so when you see and when you see Hillary, when you when you watch the, the tape again, you can see that Hillary is not she's not dodging. She's not hedging like Bill is doing. She's very direct. She actually has to hesitate when she, when you realize that that thing is staged, that Kimmel, that she was waiting for that question she practiced. She says, well, and then the people start laughing and she stops and she waits for the people to stop laughing. She says, I'm going to do it. And if you look at her, she's just smiling and she says, I'm going to do it. And she hesitates again, just practice down to a T. And so you see it in a completely different light. You see the once you see the email and realize that she and that's the way Hillary Clinton works. Like if you heard you know, how she did the the um, the. Um, preparation for Trump debates, you know, John Podesta was standing on a chair and he's yelling at her and accusing her of different things. And she sat there for seven hours a day and practice, practice, practice. That's how she does it. And it agrees with what happened with the Kimmel thing, that she's got all these lines down. And the only problem is that people aren't asking her questions. In fact, I just missed because I was in contact with the um, uh, Charlemagne, the guy in New York City on the Breakfast Club that talked to her and and he's the guy that claims he was abducted. He was abducted twice and he's talking to Hillary. And uh, so I sent him, I sent him my book and then I sent him um, all, uh, just Hillary's birthday, which is a couple of days ago. And they had her back on there again. And they didn't ask her about uh, the UFO thing, but it was then when, when this uh, email broke where um, the general was talking about the disclosure and stuff like that. And then I emailed back this stuff and he went, wow, when he saw the the whole collection of the Podesta emails, he hadn't seen them yet. And if I had gotten that to him 24 hours before, he would have been asking Hillary about UFOs. And he's got Hillary's phone number. And on the in, latest interview, she's he he, uh, he said, uh, you know, uh, I hope I still got your phone number. She said, yeah, you got my phone number. You can you know, call me anytime. So uh, he's very, very sort of powerful figure who when he said he went, wow, when he saw the the material. But we just missed it by a day where but nobody's asking Hillary, but she's pre I maintain that Hillary is absolutely open, that Hillary will answer any question. She won't evade the questions like people will bring up the fact that she didn't talk about the uh, the, the Rockefeller initiative. She absolutely did. In January of 2008, uh, Rob Sim Simone at a thousand a dollar a plate uh, fundraiser in Los Angeles, asked her about the Rockefeller Initiative. And he said she didn't dodge it. She said, yeah, I took the material to Bill. I was involved. She didn't deny it at all. And she, she has never denied anything. She's been very, very open about the whole thing. And uh, yet I don't know what's going to happen. They, when they talk about when I was told the January thing, he said may may not be disclosure, but it's going to be big. I have no idea what they're doing. All I've been assured and what I think is true is that they ha there is a plan, that this is being orchestrated according to some plan of action. Yeah. But I, I, you know, didn't want to jump on the bandwagon and say, well, they're, they're always, you know, got the exact questions. But in this situation, obviously, we see the communication saying it was on the table. 
It was one of those questions that he could have asked, and out of time or whatever it was, he didn't in 2015, and now he does in 2016, and for her to sit there and rehearse it, it does put a whole new spin on it. And it's great that we have that confirmation now, because we see, um, I often wondered if it was Kimmel and his personal interest, which I think he is interested, but this puts into question even the Obama interview. Where, where he, uh, he said, I'm going to ask him about this and that. Uh, it started with Bill Clinton. I'm going to ask him about UFOs, right? So if Podesta's way back there in 2014 uh, trying to get him to ask Bill Clinton and, and then Obama, you know, and it's not been a subject that Obama really likes to talk about. So this is great. Yeah. And if you look at the, um, I don't know if you saw the article I wrote on when the Hillary was asked the question or he wasn't asked the question on Kimmel, um, the woman that that wrote the memo, her last name is S-C-H-A-K-E. I can't remember her first name, but she is the woman that remade uh, Michelle Obama, her image. And that was, she was brought into the Clinton administration to remake Hillary Clinton's image. And she uh, talks about the fact that she got the, she was able to get a lot of the message out. And I referenced this memo from 2009 from this uh, Hillary Clinton um this person that that set up this um, the way they were working it is to get the message across on shows like Oprah and Kimmel and stuff like that, rather than on CNN and these these talk shows is to use these soft interview shows to get message across. And so this is it was intended that this message would be brought out on the on these shows. So that's where she said she got a lot of the message across, but she was upset that she didn't get the UFO question. And it, it, so it's interesting to see that, they, that John asks reporters in September to ask UFO questions of Hillary, and she doesn't get asked till December. And that whole time, they're sitting there waiting for someone to take the bait, and nobody takes the bait. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I know you got a lot of things to do. I'll let yeah. you get back to this. How many more okay. emails you got to review, do you think? Or are you caught up well, now? I'm just watching for, from day to day. I've, got, I've done all the ones that are up now. And then Thursday night on the Internet, I'll go through them um, with the, the pictures of the people. And uh, and we're actually going to send to all the people that are involved, like Podesta. And so somebody on their side will be watching this. And I've got it just basically ready. It's about 100 slides. And I go through all the various emails. And I actually show the, the clip from the email, the section. You oh, know, cool. So you're doing a live, a live presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, presentation. well, let me see. Maybe I can get this video up before then. What time is that at and where can people find it? Um, I'll send you a link. Once we're off, I'll send you a link. So there you have it, guys. I'd like to thank Grant Cameron for his time and for the work that he's done reviewing the Podesta emails. When it becomes available, I'll post a link in the video description to Grant's PowerPoint presentation that will walk you through the whole timeline in great detail if you're interested. At some point, I also plan on finishing a video analysis of Hillary's interview with Jimmy Kimmel. For more of Grant's work, you can go to presidentialufo.com, and to follow this story specifically, go to whitehouseufo.blogspot.com. I'm sure there will be more of this to come.